Hey guys, welcome to another anatomy video. Um, if you haven't watched it already, check out my first video where I talk about the uh, joint classifications of the articular system. Um, because this is a continuation of that. Because um, we're going to be talking about the structure of uh, diarthroidal joints in particular, and then we'll talk about the types of those and then the movements that they are capable of producing as well. So hope this helps. So the structure of diarthroidal joints, they can be, um, this is where, or these occur at the articular surfaces of bones. So when two bones articulate, they're not going to just be bone on bone. That's uh, not good. So there's a joint there. And this joint is going to be covered with uh, articular cartilage or hyaline cartilage um, or fiber, uh, fibrocartilage. And this is going to help protect the joint. Um, it's going to prevent those bones from wearing down on each other uh, when they're rubbing and it's going to help them articulate and move. And that's actually where you start having a lot of problems is when um, that cartilage is worn down. Um, or you can have arthritis, you know, inflammation of that cartilage. It's very painful because that cartilage can get inflamed and you start having pain, joint pain. So it's very, this is very important because your bodies are made to move and you can only move if your bones are articulating well and um, functioning the way they should be. So in addition to that, uh, that articular cartilage that covers the bones, you're going to have this articular capsule that's attached to the margin, so kind of on the outside of the articular surfaces. And you'll also have this synovial membrane, which will line the inner surface of the capsule. And that's what's going to secrete synovial fluid, which is um, just this thin, very thin, kind of oily-like fluid almost, that will help um, lubricate the joint. It's going to uh, keep that joint moving freely. It's kind of like when you put like um, WD-40 on an axle, like at a foosball table, so that it, it uh, rotates better without squeaking. That's kind of what the synovial membrane or the synovial fluid will do from the synovial membrane. It keeps the joint articulating smoothly so that um, the bones uh, move better. There are also articular discs that can be present um, when there are surfaces that are dissimilar. So often you talk about how the joints can be like convex on concave or concave on convex. Well, when the surfaces are like dissimilar like that, um, these articular discs can just aid in um, the bones moving better. Um, there's some accessory structures to the joint that are important to know about. Um, you have ligaments, and those are just um, uh, big parallel bands of elastic or fibrous um, collagenous fibers. Um, often they're uh, said to connect bone to bone and that's the big thing that people know about it. it's like okay ligaments connect bone to bone tendons tendons do muscle to bone um for my anatomy class we have to also know that ligaments are very important in maintaining the integrity of the joint within its normal range of motion um yeah so the ligaments i'm just reading my book here Ligaments will be tough parallel bundles of elastic and fibrous collagenous fibers connecting bone to bone. Their function is to maintain the integrity of that joint within its normal range of motion. So like within your knee, you have the ligaments, right? And maybe your normal range of motion is this. And so the ligaments keep it from doing something crazy. Um, and obviously, when you like rupture your ACL, that's why your knee can do this all of a sudden. That's not good. Um, okay, obviously you have tendons, 
which are um, fibrous bands of connective tissue that will attach the muscle to the bone. So usually the muscles will be going and then it will turn into a tendon, and then the tendon is the part that attaches. And then lastly, we have the bursa, which are these kind of thin fluid sacs, which are kind of the same as uh, synovial fluid. They're just these really thin sacs that uh, facil help facilitate movement between adjacent layers in the body. And again, you can have um, bursitis, inflammation of those bursa. And so it's pretty common, well, not super common, but a common bursitis injury is when people will get it on their elbow and it can just swell up to be this huge bump on their elbow. And uh, obviously that's problematic and you can try to drain the fluid, but um, it's not good. And so that's when it can get irritated and inflamed and it'll um, produce more um, fluid than it should. So that's not good. But yeah, those bursts are very important. They just help facilitate movement. So now we'll talk about um, the types of diarthroidal joints and the movements they do. In my previous video, we talked about how um, there are synovial joints, which are the most complex, but also the most common. And that's the type of diarthroidal joint. And within synovial joints, there's three types of joints. There's uniaxial, biaxial, and multiaxial. And so each of those joints um, do different types of movement, so I'll talk about each of those. So, um, the uniaxial joint was either a hinge or pivot. So a hinge joint, again, uniaxial means it just um, permits movement in one plane of movement. So hinge joints can only do flexion or extension. So it's only going to be a one movement, so this is just within the sagittal plane. Um, a common example of a hinge joint in the body is like your elbow, obviously, which is flexion extension, um, or your interphalangeal joints, and also your ankle can do this. Um, the other is a pivot joint, and this is where um, you can kind of just do this a little bit. It's like rotation, slight rotation around the longitudinal axis of a bone. So one example is the uh, atlantoaxial joint. So um, in your cervical vertebra, uh, it allows the dens and the axis can uh, rotate like this. It helps your neck do this. Um, the next is a pivot joint, or sorry, a gliding joint. So that's a, uh, a type of biaxial. Biaxial was a gliding condyloid or saddle. So a gliding joint kind of just does this type of movement. Um, an example is um, your AC joint, clavicular, your subtalar joint or your intercarpal, intercarpals or intertarsals in your foot. And so it's kind of like if you had a tire, imagine a tire skidding on an icy pond, it's gonna do that. It's not gonna spin, it's gonna go like that. And so that's how I kind of remember gliding joints because they do this type of movement. Uh, the next you have condyloid. So this is um, an example would be a um, your wrist. So uh, these movements will be able to permit like flexion, extension, ab and adduction, um, and also circumduction. So. Pretty cool. Your wrist can do a lot. 
Um, the next is a saddle joint. So that's kind of like, think of a saddle and it's going in here. And an example of this is your first carpal metacarpal, it's your thumb. And so that's going to be able to do flexion and extension, flexion and extension, um, ab and adduction, opposition. That's what makes this different than apes, as well as circumduction. So the first carpal metacarpal is different than the rest, the four fingers. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, we have ball and socket joints. Um, there's only two of these in the body, um, your shoulder and your hip. So your uh, head of your femur and the acetabulum. And so these can do uh, basically every movement. And the thing with these joints is as you increase um, mobility, you sacrifice stability. So that's why it's pretty common to get shoulder injuries of some type because it's so mobile. Um, you're, uh, it's a trade-off, it's an inverse relationship. So the more mobile it is, the less stable it is. So like joints that are super stable are the ones that don't move a lot, like your teeth. So, um, and again, the movements that can occur here are everything. So flexion, extension, ab and adduction, um, and then horizontal and ab and adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, and circumduction. So these can do everything. So it's pretty cool. So I hope this video uh, helped clear up some of the movements that diarthrodial joints can do. And if you haven't watched part one where I talk about the joint classifications, feel free to check it out. And thanks for watching.